Hello. Perfect. Um, I saw the keynote this morning, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I brought my leather jacket as well. <laughs> awesome. So, do parsers dream of electric guitars? They said that I'm going to have to yell, so I'm going to do that. Um, amazing. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah. My name is Drew. Uh, you can find me online as Arkham. I work for this company, and uh, I didn't know there was going to be an amazing stenographer, so I just wrote basically everything that my talk says on the slides, so you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, so I like to play the guitar, but I'm not very good at it. So, I'm just checking. So, I have to look up songs on the web. But those webs are dark and full of terror. <laughs> um, so usually what I look for on a song sheet is something like this. You see there's like a bunch of text. These are the lyrics of the song. They might be slightly different from the original version, just like don't mind about that. And then you'll see there's like those bold bits, and those are the chords, right? And they're basically just identified by those square brackets. So imagine, you look for something like this, but most websites out there, they look like this. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking, they have auto-playing videos in 2019, so... Um, so instead of using AD blockers or whatever, I just said, fine, I'll just do it myself, you know. I'm an engineer, I think I can do it. It's just text, you know. I know sort of how to blurb, you know, parse the blurb of text, because... <laughs> and I think Lee gave like a really good description, like why you shouldn't use regular expressions. So let's use regular expressions. <laughs> um, if you don't know what a regular expression is, uh, I'm just going to like, explain how this one works. So there's those two slashes, those are just the delimiters, they don't mean anything. What's inside is like what's important. And uh, a regular expression is meta-language, where each character can either be a real character or can be a meta-character. Unfortunately, the square bracket is a meta-character. So you can see the first backslash square character. That means I actually want a literal square bracket. Then I'm saying I want anything between A and G, and then I have this little M, and this thing at the question mark says that M is optional. And that thing usually when you're writing a chord, like this means I want a minor chord, right? And then we have the closed thing. Um, and this regular expression works very well, it finds chords. But the problem is that as a regular expression, it only understands text. So it doesn't really understand chords. So what I wish I could have is something that takes a string and finds these real chords. But what the regular expression does is to find a string and return me another set of strings, saying, I think there are chords inside there, but you know, you do that part of the job. And you know, like you have to distinguish what's the difference between A minor and B major. And this makes me very sad. Uh, fun fact, uh, in the Unicode standard, this emoji, the name is disappointed but relieved face. <laughs> And that's how I feel, because you know, I'm disappointed with regular expressions, but I'm relieved they, they don't really work properly, because otherwise I couldn't have written this talk. <laughs> so um, what are we going to do today is to use uh, a language called Elm, which is a strongly typed functional programming language. And you don't have to care if you don't know about you know, functional programming or types or strong static types, whatever. And we're going to use this library, which is called Elm Parser. And the reason why you don't need to worry about anything of that is because we're going to use this very secret way of write programs, which I've mastered throughout the years, which is called wishful programming. <laughs> um, and basically, just you know, you have this real problem, and just you wish you had solved it already, and you write something, and. By the end of it, you're sort of feeling you know, better already. And I think it also works like in your normal life. Um, 
So let's imagine I want to describe what a note is. So I say I have a type, it's a note, and this is basically an enumeration of values. So it can be either A or C or F or G, and that's the type of a note, okay? Once I have a note, then I can describe what a chord is, right? I can just say this is a chord and is it is associated with this A, for example, right? Uh, but unfortunately, this thing does not allow me to store enough information because I really want it to be a major chord or a minor chord or a dominant seventh chord and things like that. So I'm going to introduce a new type, which is called quality, and this is going to encapsulate that information. And with that, then I can finally describe what a chord is. It's something that has a note and has a quality. So I can say this is an A, so like the root note is an A, and the quality is minor. So this is exactly this like wonderful world where I wish I could be in, but in reality, I haven't done anything. You know, this is the downside of like wishful programming. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have even told you this, but I'm not really a good salesman. So let's build a parser. We're going to import this library, which is called parser, and it exposes a type called parser. And this type is a bit weird. It's, it's called like a text type, and I like to think of it as you know, you said, oh, yesterday I went to this restaurant and had this amazing, you can't really stop there, right? You have to say, like, what it was. I won't tell, so you have to guess. But in this case, we have a parser of something, and that something is a chord, okay? Um, and, okay, so this is half of the problem. The other half of the problem is I have no idea how to write that. So I'm going to use that secret technique again, and we're going to use uh, these special operators, like pipe equals pipe dot. I'm going to explain later what they are. But we're going to continue using this wishful programming and saying that at some point I will have a note and I have a quality. This is a way to describe an anonymous function. And once I have those two things, then I can build that core and I can say that the parsing operation has succeeded, right? And in order to do that, I can call something which is a note parser, which is something that parses notes, and I can use something which parses qualities. And that operator, the pipe equals, I call it a human funnel operator. So it's basically this parser, I like to think, that is able to consume input and is able to return some value. So in this case, the first one will return the note, and the second one will return the quality. Let's look at the note parser. It's a parser of a note, and it has this special code, which is one-off, which means one of these possible branches. And one of the branches says, when you see the input, which is like this capital A, then let me know that that's the A note, okay? And that operator, the pipe dot, I call it the watch pocket operator. I think of it as this, you know, this parser that like consumes input but doesn't really give out anything, just like, you know, puts it in its watch pocket. Um, and then you do the same for all the other nodes. Then for quality, we do something very similar. We say one off, and we say if it's a lowercase m, that means that chord is minor. If we see a seven, that means it's a dominant seventh. And if it's nothing, I'm just going to succeed with major. Because if I just see A, capital A, that just means A major. Um, and with that, we have all the bits that we need, right? Like all the bits that we said before, like we really understand like what those things are. Um, if you paid attention, uh, we're not really considering the square brackets, right? Uh, but you can do that. You just like use the watch pocket operator again. And, you know, with this, we got something which is very similar to um, our regular expression. But the difference is that the code now really knows the chords, knows like what A minor is, what B is, it knows everything, you know, it's not just a string for it anymore. And it's the same thing that happens when your, you know, your programming language compiler transforms your text file into stuff that then runs on your computer. So once we have that, we can figure out which are the notes that compose a chord, like A minor, we can build a guitar representation in Elm, we can choose chords which are nice to play so that you know, like, I don't have to you know, squeeze my hands in a weird ways. And we can build SVG charts of such chords. And all of this on the fly. There's like nothing hard coded. So in a sort of way, you can think of it as the computer like, knows better than me how to play those chords on a guitar, right? So we're going to do a quick demo now. Um, and I've set up this little program, which is here. And you can see it's the same sample that we saw before. And, uh, and you can see that, you know, here if I hover on a chord, it just like tells me how to play that on a guitar, right? And I've also hooked up this library which is called Web Audio Font. So, oh, maybe it doesn't work. Oh yeah, now it works, perfect. But you can also hear how it sounds like, right? Um, you can sing it in your head, you don't have to do it out loud. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, so 
these are like all the chords that I've written in the library. So I spent a lot of time on Wikipedia, just like, you know, study musical <laughs> theory. That's what you get when you like programming. You have to really learn stuff. Um, so thank you for that. Just one more thing. Yeah! Um, perfect. Okay, so uh, I'll give you, okay. Yep. So uh, I prepared this little song, um, and I want to dedicate it to Lee because it's this song that I've written about uh, my failed relationship, like in the past, and uh, relationship with a regular expression. <laughs> so so uh, you might have heard like some of the chords, so if you feel like singing along or clapping, please do that. It'll be very much appreciated. I'm not a musician, so, I, what I lack in musical, you know, skills, I compensate with also a lack of shame. So <laughs> let's just do this. Um, okay. One, two, three, four. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never ride a parser in my life. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. I grew strong and learned how to parse along dear old regex from outer space. I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. Should have locked that stupid screen, should have revoked your public key. If I know for just one second you'd be back to bother me, well now go lock out the door. Just turn around now, cause you're not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to scrape the web with CGI? Did I crumble? Did you think I lay on die or not that I, I will survive? For as long as I know how to love, I'll know I stay alive. I got all my life to live, I got all my love to give. I will survive, I will survive. Bam, bam, come. <laughs>